I'm Dean Gangler, uh, Cutler, Indiana, uh, small town just uh, uh, north of Indianapolis, um, living on about a 300 acre uh, cash grain farm, and uh, I've built a new Monoslope cattle barn, and I'll talk to you uh, briefly about a few questions that the industry seems to have, and, and see if I can't help you out. This business started with a freezer beef business, the kids in 4-H, we started out with a few heifers, and I got that running when the kids were, were young. Uh, I do come from a three-generation cattle farm operation, but our, our operation for our particular family just started when the boys were young. Um, we started with that, started breeding them and selling, selling our meat as freezer beef. As the years have progressed, the kids are through college, we uh, continue to grow our operation. Um, as of today, we're a 60 cow, cow, calf operation. We needed somewhere to finish all these cattle. Uh, we were finishing in outside lots. We were fighting the mud, the weather, the wind, the rain, frozen ground. Uh, fighting a lot of outside issues that uh, I'm sure the rest of you fight and uh, um, is a common problem. In my opinion, uh, raising cattle in Indiana uh, is environmentally difficult at times. Uh, our weather uh, at times makes it difficult to run a finish operation outdoors. Uh, our weather goes from extreme colds to extreme heat. Uh, we go from extreme wets uh, to extreme dry. So our weather conditions in Indiana sometimes um, make an adverse effect on how we can raise these cattle and get our rate of gains where we want them to be. Um, our feedlot areas, if they're not, if you don't have a compaction area, um, for the, the cattle eat on turns to mud lots as well. In the winter time, we get our snow, we get our runoff. Uh, the cattle are adversely affected, and at the end of the day, the rate of gain is, is what's changed. Uh, we've decided to make a change from one of those outside lots that we had for years and years and years, and bring these cattle inside. And immediately, we saw a change in what the cattle could do. Um, you see a few of the calves behind us. Um, they're, they're growing, the rate of gain is phenomenal. Uh, they're, they're slick haired, they're on good feed, uh, they're sound footed. Uh, we don't have anybody with bruised feet because of the frozen. They don't have cattle up to their knees in mud trying to get to the feeders or the salt blocks, anything like that. A lot of value added. As you know about the Summit Building, uh, the cattle are in full shade right now. We're at 12 o'clock noon, the cattle got all the shade they want. Uh, we've got some wind meters that uh, have been put up for uh, um, verification of that. We can watch the wind, we've got data to prove what the wind does. Uh, this building um, does exactly as advertised and uh, has been a huge change for our operation. I really like that the calves get cool, fresh water. Uh, these cattle immediately, when we put them in this building, start doing better. Our rate of gain has increased. Um, just visually, you can see the calves grow better. Statistically, I don't have all the numbers in front of me, but we are, are definitely increasing our, our uh, return on investment just, just by the uh, rate of gain. We've exceeded three pounds a day without any trouble. You know, I'd like to have four pounds a day. You know, everybody says that it's unobtainable. Well, I don't know why, it's, why we can't obtain it. Breed correctly, proper bulls, proper cows, creep feed, get them calves going, put them in one of these buildings, and let's see what we can do. Our feeding practices are, uh, we've got silage that we make ourselves. Uh, then we grind our own feed and we top dress all of our silage with our own feed. Uh, cattle are fed twice a day, uh, as they are on any other operation. The ease of feeding, um, we're able to feed. Um, Ethan gets here every morning and does the feeding for us. Um, he can come out here, check the calves, have them fed, and, and he's done in 20 minutes. Okay, and we can go on to making hay, planting our corn. We are a, a uh, grain farmers as well, and we make our own hay. There's just two of us, so we're really, really busy around here. It's nice that he can do that. When we're done in an evening, he goes home, I come back out, I recheck my cows, we do our evening feeding, that consumes another 20 minutes. We spent 40 minutes a day tending to a whole barn full of cattle. Uh, where else are you gonna go and have this simplicity? Concrete bunk, nothing new to, to, to farmers, nothing new to agriculture. But if there's any reason or anything, you can notice the feed's bad. These can be scraped very easily. We put the, whatever is undesirable in our manure bay and we're clean and ready to go. Um, if you're feeding in bunks out in a pasture or down on the ground, you just don't know what they're consuming and what they're not. We know exactly what they're consuming or exactly what they're not. So I really like the bunk system. Um, it's worked well for us. We do bed with the corn stalks. Uh, when we bed the cattle, we, we change our ration just a little because the cattle do eat the stalks, but what they don't eat then they're bedding in. To me, there's really no waste. Um, what manure we are taking out, we can look in a little bit. It is composting, creating enormous amounts of heat. We don't find those areas like you do with straw where you've got a big old pile of straw and uh, not composting, just bright yellow straw that's wet. 
when we go into any of this, it, it is definitely composting, um, and it is, it is being used to its full potential. Um, it's something we have on the farm, so not only are they eating it, they're bedding in it, creating the compost. I'm um, excited to see with this much compost this winter how much heat we get off of it. That's going to be an exciting thing to see this winter. Manure Bay was designed and helped um, through the Equip. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Equip, get to your local ASC office. You'll need to talk to them, lots of rules and regulations. But at the end of the day, they will help you decide on what size your building is, what size your manure bay needs to be. The biggest thing that, that I saw for the manure bay, and keep in mind this was completely voluntarily, okay? I, I did this on my own. Um, nobody forced me to put because I'm under the 300 head limit. But what I saw when I toured a lot of other facilities is they were putting their manure uh, outside into the weather. Okay, and every facility I went to um, kind of reminded me of the way Grandpa used to do it. Okay, you had a pile of manure out there and the leaching and, and the mess uh, to me was unacceptable. I said, I want to keep my manure inside. The minute I decided that, got with the government, the EPA and EQIP, they're all with you. They want to help you. They like that being inside. So if it's an option, put your manure inside, they'll help you. Ethan scrapes, especially around the drinkers, um, you know, we do get a buildup of, of wet slurry stuff. We push it in here and it's amazing within a week's time, okay, it's dry, okay, it's stacked, the moisture goes to the bottom, it leaches out on our floor, it does, but with the way the design of the building and the airflow it gets, it just is not a manure pit. It's a zero discharge facility. Um, we've done a lot of things around here to protect the environment and protect myself. I drink the water around here, I live here. Uh, I don't want to drink bad water and I don't want my friends or neighbors to. We went ahead and we've diked the system, okay, we put waterways go completely around this building and they, the outlet then is open to my back field. If anything would ever happen here, which I don't know how it ever could, we're catching the water, we're going to disperse it out over my own farm ground, on my own land, making sure once again that no one else has to deal with our cattle operation. Ethan, my herdsman, who does most of the cleaning around here, he can clean this facility completely down top to bottom in less than an hour. Uh, if we're hurry, he can probably do it in a half hour, but uh, when he comes out and cleans, he's, he'll spend an hour and he can have the whole facility cleaned. Alley scraped, manure put into our manure bay, the cattle are all fed, fresh clean water. We used to do it, we had lots scattered all over wherever we could find somewhere to put cattle. We were spending hours and hours hauling hay, hauling feed, everything is condensed here. Um, our silage is on location, our feed is on location, any hay or anything we need is on location. So this just improved our efficiency, saving time. We get our hay put up with good protein values. We get our silage put up in a timely manner. We get things done that make a difference to our cattle. Instead of chasing the cattle, we can, we can work for the cattle. Um, and it's been all possible because of this bill. What we're doing here basically is we're a four lot system. We're putting our smallest calves at the farthest end and our largest calves at the far end, close to our working area. We can sort by size now. When I had cattle before, due to limited space, you had 400 pounders eating with 700 pounders. Okay, but that never worked because that 400 pounder boy he struggled. Okay, and the 700 pounder he got too much. We all know how that works. With a multiple pin system, uh, 28 foot pins, um, we can put uh, up to 30, 33, 34 head per pin. Um, by size, the competition uh, is equal, uh, and the cattle. Our gain eagle. You don't notice that large change in gain. This is a building that was built with a, with a bright future. We want room to expand. When you build a pole barn, you never build it big enough. We built a cattle barn uh, bigger than we needed, and uh, we're going to grow into it. We hope to be completely filled within the next two years with our own stock. We're doing it here, and we're doing it with this building and this facility, and I'm very proud of it.